Traders, I'm done trading for the day and as you can see here, uh, another fantastic day for me. I mean, uh, finished my day yesterday with $170,000 and <laughs> another $43,000 today, not including my open trades, which are a few more thousand dollars. I'm still riding CVNA and Amazon. So um, I'm going to take off early today. Uh, 30 minutes of trading was uh, quite enough for me because I am flying in a few hours back to Berlin. So I need to pack my things and everything. I just want to go quickly through my trades and you know what I'm not going to spend time much time talking about Tesla today although that's my biggest winner because Tesla is quite a, quite a straightforward trade and well I do it with more size because I trust Tesla more it worked out very nice moved in right moved out right stopped it um, when it started moving higher again Tesla was a candidate for the short side today pre-market time where I posted my picks and we also had two candidates for long which were Amazon, Amazon and CVNA. Now both of them were traded long. Now take a look at my Amazon and my CVNA trade. In fact I started trading both of them. We uh, both Scott and I we had losing trades. We started with two losers today in Amazon and in CVNA. The, the result you're seeing here is in fact after my second trade in both and that's what I want to talk about and that's the let's call it the more educational part of our session today. So what I want to first talk about is the fact that you know they were both candidates for long and why is that? Because they both started with a big gap up. Both some pre-market good um, uh, data uh, and uh, Amazon was upgraded. I can't remember what, what was the case with CVNA. Anyway, both were expected to move higher, but you do not go higher unless you see some right technical formation. Now, what happened in CVNA was kind of strange. Scott talked about it earlier and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more now. We moved in on this spike up. Look at this spiky candle that you're seeing here. In fact, that's a 10 point candle. <laughs> That's exactly a 10 point candle. We plan to go long over 210. We just went long when it spiked up. Now, let me tell you this. It's hard not to click the button when you see this uh, the stock moving higher. But as you're not supposed to be moving out on spikes and you know I do not move out on spikes, you're not supposed to getting to be getting into a trade on a spike. So the fact that both Scott and I took a long trade over there when it spiked up, that was a mistake. It was a little bit hard to understand because it, as you can see the candle started here. So that was a five points spike. And for CVNA, maybe it's not that much, but on the same one minute candle, it spiked up and down 10 points. And when it spiked down and the second candle, it continued, it took us out. So you see, it's not the right thing to move in on the spike and it's out on the spike. And it's not the right thing to move in on the spike. We, bo we both moved in on the spike today and we were very, very uh, sorry. Just a few seconds later, I mean, it took us uh, less than a minute. Right, Scott? Less than a minute to, <laughs> to get out of this trade. It was a very unpleasant uh, losing trade for us. So I started with this one and I also started with a loser in Amazon. Now, Amazon was also a long candidate. Now, the second education thing I want to talk about today is why do I move or when do you move into a second trade in a stock where you already have a loser? That would be extremely dangerous. Usually it is extremely dangerous. Why? Because when you're having a loser in the trade, you feel like you want to compensate. You feel like you need to make money back. So I would say that for traders uh, who are not experienced enough, this would usually be something I would not, I would not advise. I mean, just the fact that you go in for a second trade in a losing trade uh, means usually if you're not experienced enough that you just want to your payback time. You want to make money no matter what. You want to get your money back or whatever reason you're clicking the button. However, if you're experienced enough and you recognize a pattern, I'll talk about uh, Amazon. Now, Amazon should have moved higher where I thought it would because it came down, then pulled back up again. Then I went long and it was supposed to move over the highs. It did not. Okay, so I had a losing trade. But Amazon was still strong. It was still upgraded. It, it still came in with uh, good news. So you look for a failure of the trend down 
and then you go long. So just a perfect technical formation here. Look at 3024, where we moved in. That was just a perfect technical formation for a long. And Amazon's still going, and I'm still and I'm still long Amazon. Actually, what 26 points now? I only have 100 shares left. Over 26,000, dollars. So right now, Amazon's still going. We found a nice technical formation, and although I had a loser in Amazon, the reason I came back to this trade was because I planned this trade pre-market time. I was expecting Amazon to finally move higher, and now I'm going to talk about the market too. So, when a stock that is moving down, but you expect it to move up, is proving to you that it wants to move up, and what's better than a nice technical formation like that? There are several different formations that you can you can look for, of course. Then you can definitely consider a second trade. And again, if you're not experienced enough, probably stay away because you're never sure if you're taking the second trade just to compensate for the first one or you really got yourself something interesting. But at that point, I was kind of understanding a little bit more about Amazon. I, I watched the downtrend. I watched it failing to move lower. And I also watched the market, which is the most important combination uh, in fact of my decision to go long Amazon and that the same thing happened with CVNA the same thing happened with CVNA because you know this candle that spiked up and down took us out but then when it cooled down again it did what we expected it to do so another long opportunity in CVNA yes that was a little bit more hard to comprehend a little bit more uh, uh, tricky, I would say. But you know, when you have a spiking candle, it's sometimes a big buyer, it's sometimes a big seller, what we call a fat finger, somebody who's buying a lot of quantity or selling a lot of quantity. That took me out. That should have taken me out. It's okay that it took me out. I can't hold on. It could have came down another 20 points. But at that point, I had another opportunity to move in and I did move in. So compensated for the <laughs> first trade, but did the right thing. The important thing is to watch the S&P 500 because the S&P 500 started with a gap up today. When the S&P starts with a gap up today, you expect it, you don't expect it to crash. Maybe it will later, but you don't expect it to crash. So the first move was up, then it failed and came under the lows. Why did it come under the lows? Well, that's the first thing we learn in our Star Trader course where we talk about gaps, the point where it closes the gap. Look at the point where it closed the gap exactly the point where it closed the gap. The gap is like a vacuum. It draws in the price. You know, the S&P is 500 different companies. So the average would come down to close the gap. That's why the S&P is very, very reliable in closing gaps. So you look at the S&P, it's coming down, closing the gaps. And if you've done the Star Trader course with me, you know that approximately 82% of the time it would do that. Now, that's a lot. And at the point where it closed the gap, that was the point where, where Amazon started moving higher and CVNA started moving higher. So when it came down and closed the gap, I do not expect it to continue coming down. I don't expect it to continue moving down. Otherwise, my long trade in Amazon and my long trade in, in CVNA are likely to go wrong. So I'm watching the S&P. I'm watching the Amazon trade. I'm watching the CVNA. I'm saying to myself, well, S&P just closed the gap or about. When we talked about it, it was about to close the gap. We were actually in the middle of the red candles here where I told you here in the room that we are about to stop and we are about to reverse. How big would the reversal be? Will it continue coming down? Maybe it will. But I was looking for a small pullback from the lows in order to get a winner in Amazon. And I've got just that. And CVNA worked out well too. So you see, it's not just the fact that you watch Amazon or you watch CVNA and you make a decision whether you go long or you go short or you plan a trade, you also watch the market. You put everything in, you combine everything together. Maybe you watch Amazon, you've got a fantastic technical formation. You know what? Maybe a 60% chance to make a winner, to have a winner. But when you take in some more consideration, like where the market's going, because the market is really the institutional traders. And when you put in together market direction and Amazon direction and the point where the market closed the gap. So you see, it's, it's a lot of things to combine here. And then at the point where you see everything clicking the right, clicking in together, then maybe at that point you no longer have 60% in Amazon. Maybe just because the market now is supposed to move higher, you probably have 70%, maybe more. That's what we're looking for as traders. We don't look for the 55%. We don't look for the 60%. We look for the 65 or more percent chance to succeed. 
and we put everything together and we did that very nicely today. So you're looking at my uh, PNL here and you see three winners. Not really. Uh, two of them started as losers. I started with two losing trade, but I hanged on. I was watching the market. I was watching the stocks. They finally proved to me that they're doing what I expected them to do. And you know what? I'm, I didn't even talk much about Tesla. <laughs> so another good day. I really want to thank you for being here with me today. So I'll take off early because I have an early flight, middle of the night actually. And um, I'll probably see you tomorrow. I'm not sure, depending on how uh, how well the flights go. Because I've got two flights tomorrow to Berlin, you know, COVID times and everything. So um, you guys on YouTube, thank you very much for joining us too. Please give us a thumb up. That would help our channel. And thank you all. And um, I may see you tomorrow or the day afterwards. Have a great trading session, traders, today. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. The material was taken from The Market Whisperer, my Amazon best-selling book. This essential guide to stock trading is ideal for those with no background or experience in stock trading. Click here to read the 200-page part 1 of this book absolutely free. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.